You're listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. In this podcast, we'll hear a message from Pastor Robert. Well, we've been in uh, the book of Ephesians. Uh, There's six chapters in the entire book. Uh, It's been a series, one chapter a week. So today is the fifth uh, chapter of what I called spiritual boot camp. Uh, Before we get there, go ahead and look in your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter five. Uh, But also we got a champion in the house and uh, the state of West Virginia had a big event down at Stonewall Jackson last night. Uh, and uh, John Spiker sitting right there on the front row where he is almost every Sunday morning. He won auctioneer uh, over the entire state of West Virginia. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's, uh, I got to be very careful how I select my words on this next. There's a few basketball teams left in the uh, uh, local playoffs that will take them down to uh, Charleston, and Lincoln is one of them, and that's uh, where I graduated from, but I know I believe there's still a couple schools maybe in Marion County, and there's some ball games, and so uh, again, we got people from every county and every school, so I'm treading real light, uh, but here's, here's what I really truly believe. God just let the best team, let the best team go, right? Amen. Go ahead, give God a, a great hand clap. Well, I already said this earlier, and and I mean this, I I don't know that I've, uh, maybe I have said it before, but uh, right now I believe this is probably the most uh, helpful message, and I want you to hear before I get started, I am not here to offend you. I am not here to condemn you. I am here to help you. I am a messenger today with a message from God Almighty. So let's look at the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Again, the title is Spiritual Boot Camp. There is always a battle between the new man and the old man. This is why we need teaching like Paul gives us in the book of Ephesians. You say, you're new to church, you don't understand what I mean by the old man or the new man. The old man is what we were before we came to know Jesus Christ. Uh, And maybe that's you today. Maybe you're living in that season of your life that you don't know Christ, Uh, but the Bible Bible teaches that the new man is after the Holy Spirit touches us. The Bible said we cannot be saved unless the Spirit of God draws us. And I believe the Spirit of God will draw you here today if you'll open up your heart. And when the Spirit of God draws you and you humble yourself and you acknowledge that you have fallen short of the glory of God, that you have sinned in your life, and then when you repent and you pray, and you ask Christ to forgive you of your sins, uh, that very moment the Bible teaches us that we become a new man or a new woman. We are no longer the old man. We are new in Christ. But that doesn't stop there. Every day of your life, there will be a battle between the old man and the new man. But you've got to learn to take the old man to the altar and sacrifice him Oh my goodness, somebody help me preach this morning, amen. So we better get started or we'll get beat to the buffet, all right? Ephesians chapter five, verse one. Be ye therefore followers, followers of God as dear children. And I underline that in my Bible, of followers of God. The basic idea is to imitate Christ. Do outwardly for others what he has done inwardly for each of us. You don't have to tell people that you're a Christian. You need to let it just flow out of you and do for others outwardly what Christ has done for us inwardly. Does that make any sense? So it says followers of God. The idea is that of commitment. And wow, just what I see 
In the world today, there is very little commitment to anything. If you don't like it, you just take your ball and go home. Whether it's your job, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your church, whatever it is, any little thing happens, you just run and go somewhere else. Well, my goodness, friend, that's not what being a follower of God, the idea is that of commitment. It's the idea of attachment. When something is attached, it is attached. Do you understand? It, it has the idea of devotion. Uh, I am devoted to you, God. I am attached to you, God. I am committed to you, God. I'm attached to my family. I'm attached to my wife. I'm committed to my husband. I'm committed to my wife. I'm devoted to my family. I'm devoted to my job. I'm devoted to my household of church that I attend. God, I want to be a follower of God. Is there any followers of God at Jewel City today? Give him a hand. Woo! Before a person can be a follower of God, he must commit and attach himself to God. You might be saved by raising your hand and saying a prayer, but are you truly a follower of God? You've got to make a commitment. The old man must die. I don't go where I used to go. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't run around with the people that I used to run around with. There's a change in my life. Do you hear me? Must surrender and devote our lives to God. And then we begin to follow God. And what a journey it is. Been 40 years for me, 42. And what a journey it has been. Imitate, somebody say imitate. imitate. Leviticus chapter 19 verse two says, ye shall be holy for I the Lord your God am holy. Are you imitating God? Are you trying your best to be a follower of God? I never said perfect because none of us will ever accomplish that. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he needs to move on. Let's go to Ephesians chapter five, verse two. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Wow. The phrase here, give himself for us means Christ died in our place. If you really fully ever grasp that, it'll change the way you think. It means Christ died in our place, Christ died in our stead, and he was our substitute. I deserve to die. I'm the sinner, you deserve to die, you're the sinner, Christ never sinned. Christ didn't deserve to die. And he said, for John Bates, I'll die. Right on around the room, do you hear me? He gave himself in John 10 and 11, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. So we should not put the blame on God for our shortcomings. And not only should we not put the blame on God for our shortcomings, we should not put the blame on others. Oh. What we need to do is put our flesh, I'm, I'm preaching to myself, on the altar as a sacrifice just like Jesus did. Somebody say amen. amen. Ephesians chapter five, verse two. Christ gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. These words give a higher meaning to the death of Christ than just meeting our need. I said these words, they give a higher meaning to the death of Jesus more than just meeting our need. We think, well, Jesus died because he wanted to save our soul. That's exactly right, but there's more. And you, when you research this, or when I research this, 
Christ, in giving himself as an offering to God, Christ was looking beyond our need to the responsibility of glorifying God. God gave him those instructions. And he looked beyond just saving us and said, God, I'm going to be obedient and God, I'm going to glorify you. He was concerned primarily with doing the will of God and obeying God. So if we're to be followers of God, imitators, then you and I ought to live by the Lord's example and want to glorify God. Not just save me, Lord, from hell, but God, I want to be attached to you. I want to be devoted to you. I want to be committed to you. God, just not to get me out of hell, but God, I want to send up a smell of fragrance uh, that will please you, God. I want to glorify you, God, because you say walk in these commandments. I need to walk this way because it will bring you glory. Somebody in the house, give God a hand. Woo! Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 31, but the world may know that I love the Father. This is Jesus. Said, and he said, and as the Father gave me commandments, even so I do, he said, arise and let us go. <laughs> he said, I got to do what my Father wants me to do. Man, oh man, we, I'm just being honest with you. I'm a long way from being where I need to be. But honestly, every day I try to say, Lord God, help me today. How, how, how many knows that old song? One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking from you. Just give me the strength to trust and obey, for there's no other way. How many knows that, huh? Did I bring back any memories? Memories that anybody in the house, God help us. I said, God help us, Lord, just to trust you and obey you. Amen. Man, if we'll trust God and if we'll obey God, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you won't be able to uh, hold on to it. Somebody give him a hand and a shout of praise. Look at your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor, he needs to move on. Ephesians chapter five, verse three. Oh my, help me, Jesus. Mm. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be one named among you as becometh saints. What are we talking about here? All kinds of, of sexual sin. The believer to be a follower of God, we have a responsibility of cleansing, doing what God asks us to do, to be morally pure. Most Help me, Lord, say the right thing. A lot of churches won't mention sex, but it's a good thing. <laughs> I'm done right there. I'm done. <laughs> Only at Jewel City Church. God ordained. <laughs> Some of you guys saying, you need to hear, you're looking at your wife saying, you need to listen to the pastor right now. <laughs> listen to me. Between a husband and a wife. Outside of marriage, between a man and a woman. Between a man and a woman. Not here to offend. I'm telling you, I'm the messenger. Matthew 5 Verse eight says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Wow. All right, let's go. I've stayed there on that verse long enough. Let's move on. Ephesians chapter five, verse four, neither filthiness 
nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Paul cautions. He cautions, however, that in proper language should have no place in the Christian conversation. It does not reflect the presence of God in our lives. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, clean your mouth up. Ephesians 5 and 5, moving along. Some of these verses, I don't want to camp there too long. Ephesians 5 and 5, for this you know, for this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covet man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. He's talking about putting anything else before God in our lives. Anything. God is above all things. God is a jealous God. Do you hear me? Uncleanliness has no part with God. Ephesians chapter five, verse eight. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. And then he says, walk as children of light. Your actions should reflect your faith. Your actions. Not what you say, but your actions. And what you say, but it's what you do. People watch you and your actions should reflect your faith. Let me go back to that verse, okay? For ye were sometimes darkness, okay? We're there, so you got a choice, darkness, but you are light in the Lord. So there's darkness and there's light. Walk as children of light. There is two walks. Two walks through life are available to each one of us in this room. There is the life and the walk of darkness or the life and the walk of light. My God. There is a world of difference between the two. You need to hear me. There is a world of difference between walking in light and walking in darkness. A person's eternity is determined by which life and by which walk you pursue. It is so important that you understand me this morning that if you choose uh, to remain in darkness and to walk in darkness all of your life at the end of the journey, your eternity will be splitting hell wide open, brother. And all people say, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to have a party. No, you are not. When you get to heaven, there'll be nothing but weeping and gnashing of teeth. It'll be total darkness. Huh? Hell. Well, when I get to hell, what is, yeah, she corrected me. When you get to hell, <laughs> woo! I got Indy over here talking about sex and my wife getting me back on track. If you split hell wide open, friend, there'll be nothing but weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not going to be a party. It's not going to be a celebration. And through eternity, you'll hear the word of God and you'll wish that you had changed your heart. But when you choose today to step out of the darkness like I did 42 years ago and step Stepped into the light, you will at the end of your journey in eternity with heaven and God Almighty. What kind of an idiot are you? You got hell or you got heaven? There ain't no in between. Somebody, if you're going to heaven, if you got your reservation, stand up and give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. Come on, somebody. Somebody bless the Lord. Woo. Oh, I'm glad you corrected me. <laughs> Praise God. Your eternity is valuable. Valuable. You say, well, I'm young. Friend, it doesn't matter. Death can knock on your door today. Do you hear me? Ephesians chapter five, verse 11. And have no fellowship, wow, 
with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Wow, it says unfruitful works. I got the old commentary, I started reading. We, when we are born again, the enemy has no right to reproduce his fruit in our lives anymore. Because the old man is dead and the new man is attached and he's devoted and he's committed to God. And God says to study and show ourselves approve. Huh. You need to get attached to a life group. You need to get attached to a men's Bible study. Shame on you men that don't come out to a Bible study and you're struggling in your life and your family's in the balance and you just don't make an effort to make any change in your life. We start a new Bible study tomorrow night and every man in the house ought to come and say, I'm committed, I'm devoted, I'm going to learn and I'm going to change. Oh my goodness, uh, this ain't my message, but you know when I was walking around before church shaking hands, we got enough children in here to fill up the recharge and uh, young adults and unite and the kids co. Shame on you mom and dad that don't bring your children out to church. I'm just going to preach what God has laid in my heart today. We got everything. They got the lights. They got all the things. The band, everything. But it's the word of God that will change their life and you ought to show them that you're devoted. While I'm speaking about it, we got church a lot of you don't know on Sunday night at six o'clock and you know what there's about 1200 seats in here and there's 1100 of them vacant on a Sunday night that's got your say God I don't want just saved I want to be attached I want to be connected I want to be committed I want to be devoted I don't know about you but I'm telling you God will do a change in your life if you'll surrender and give it all to God God will do something in your life. Quit moaning and groaning and crying and complaining about everything and get attached. Get committed. Say, God, I'm not going to stay this way. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to lay it down on the altar of sacrifice. God, I ain't leaving until you help me. Come on, somebody. It tears my heart up to see people struggling all the time. It won't change what you're doing. And I'm talking to a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of people, unfruitful works, no right to reproduce, and then it happens to our children. Generational curses, what a shame. It's important, listen to me, to avoid evil pleasures. Sin tastes good like honey. And then after a season, turns into gravel. Devil, show, he, he tempts you, but he'll never show the end result. Do you hear me? It's important to avoid evil pleasures. So Paul also instructs us to rebuke and to expose them. Hmm, hard to do, isn't it? Hard to do. Often our silence is interpreted as approval. I said oftentimes our silence is interpreted as approval. Well, I'm here today to serve notice to the devil. I ain't never been silent and I am not silent today. And I'll not be silent tomorrow or the next day or the next day. I've got a responsibility ordained and called by God to preach the truth. And I ain't going to water it down. You need to hear me this morning. 
sin is sin. If you're shacking up with somebody, you need to get it right under the blood of Jesus and you need to get married. If you got bitterness in your heart, you need to run to this altar and you need to bow down and you need to ask God to forgive you and clean you up. If you got an addiction, if you got a drug addiction, brother, that is not God's plan. That is the plan of darkness that came from the devil. If you got an unforgiving spirit, if you got a critical spirit, I can go right on down the list. Uh, in the culture today, the big cool uh, woke thing, woke is from the devil. Uh, do you hear me? I said woke. Uh, you need to wake up instead of follow woke. You need to wake up and arise uh, and step out of the darkness and into the light. Uh, there is two bathrooms. Uh, there is a men's bathroom uh, and there is a women's bathroom. Uh, in God's eyes, in God's eyes, uh, there is a man uh, and a woman in marriage. Uh, I said in God's eyes, uh, I'm not, I don't hate nobody, uh, but I'm telling you in God's eyes, there is a man and there is a woman. And if we're going to reproduce uh, not bad fruit, but good fruit, children that's going to be raised up in the house of God. There is no other way. It don't matter what you think. It don't matter if you get mad at me today. It's what God said. Uh, I didn't write this book. God wrote that book. And I'm just a messenger. There is no culture. There is a kingdom. There is a kingdom culture. Somebody give him a hand clap and a shout of praise. Woo! In love, speak the truth. When you speak of something, and a lot of people, we just keep speaking this culture nonsense. When you speak it, you magnify it. We have put this in this immoral garbage in our public from, I don't care, I don't care, from Disney to the libraries to the middle schools to the high schools to the colleges to the White House to the Congress to the Senate to all your utility companies to your restaurants and all this nonsense that are more concerned about that than they are the souls of the people, not only in America, but all around the world. And as long as we're silenced, that's saying, well, they accept it. Well, let me tell you, my God is not silent. And God don't sleep, and God don't slumber. And God's eyes are always roaming to and fro. And God will not be mocked. Do you hear what I'm saying? God is still God. Uh, there's a king uh, by the name of Jesus uh, that is coming back someday. Uh, and he ain't coming back after wokeness. He's coming back after a church uh, that is spotless and pure and holy. Somebody give God a hand clap and a shout of praise. Ephesians 5 and 14. I don't think I read that yet. I'm about half drunk right now. <laughs> Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Most people in the world are sleeping. It's men and women. Uh, in, in, in the light of God, just asleep, man. Just even church folk, just asleep, man. People probably sitting right here now. Some of you saying, "Man, it's almost uh, what is it? It's 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 four minutes after eleven. When's he going to shut up? I'll tell you when he's going to shut up. When God says it's over. <laughs> That's a, and, and instead of being thinking about why you shouldn't be here, you ought to be thinking about why you are here. <laughs> instead of thinking about getting out of here, you ought to be thinking about getting out of hell <laughs> and getting into heaven. <laughs> That's what you ought to be thinking about." instead of thinking about, well, I got to go get my stomach filled. You ought to get filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That's what you ought to want. It'll change your life. I said, it'll change your life. What he did for me, picked me up out of the gutter. He cleaned me up. He put my feet on a solid rock. Where are you standing? Are you on the rock or on you on the cliff? Somebody help us, Jesus. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Ephesians 5 and 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. Oh, man, listen to this. I, I was raised, you don't call nobody a fool. But God can say what he wants. He says you got to walk this way, not that way. Not as fools, but as wise. 
circumspectly means carefully, purposefully. Some, some people walking through life with no purpose step on a landmine, step on another landmine. Just keep stepping on landmines. I'm going to keep stepping on the rock. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Don't need no, uh, I don't need no explosion. I got the explosion. I got the power of God. Shut up in my bones. Uh, do you hear me? Get off the landmines. Get planted on a rock. Get planted on a rock. Whew. means worthy, walk worthy, walk worthy. Verse 15, life is a walk, a pathway that we trod every day. Two kinds of people that walk through out life, two kinds, fool, a fool, an unwise person, that's what a fool is, meaning thoughtless, careless, one who gives little thought about how they should live. I just, if it feels good, I'll do it. Well, that will get you in trouble. Every single time. The wise person is a person that's thinking. A person that is thoughtful. A person that is careful. And a person that is caring. And a person that is spiritually minded. Father, I don't want to go unless your spirit leads me. Lord, I don't want to open up my mouth and say a word unless your spirit leads me. Huh? My goodness. What a walk when you're walking with God, Rob. What a walk. My wife and I, I did a funeral Thursday and we had an appointment over in a high Thursday afternoon. We got in the car and we started down the road and you know, for about a week before we left, every phone call, just every phone call was trouble, someone dying, some problem and whatever. And I looked at my wife and we're holding hands and I'm driving and I said, man, whew, I can feel it leaving, just the, the pressure and the, the worry and the stress. And, and we got to talking about the blessings and how good God has been to us. And my wife looked over and she said, you know, there's been a couple of times in our lives together that I wish that we could freeze time. And she said, one was back when my dad and your mom and dad was alive. And I'm, I remember her saying, that, boy, if we could just freeze time. And she said, we're in that season again in our lives. We can pretty much do what we want and, and, and have the things that we want. And, and we got it. And none of that makes us happy. What makes us happy is God. And so there we're driving down the road and, and my baby said, man, I just wish I could freeze time and, and you and I could just live like this forever. There is coming a day that time will be no more. Do you hear me? And we'll step out of this old messed up world and we'll step into eternity. And, and the way it looks, I might beat her there, but I'll be waiting at the gate uh, and then we'll be able to live forever. Come on, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Do you hear me? Fairmont State, man, well represented two or three rows. Uh, you got the world ahead of you. Oh, just stay focused with God. Don't step on the landmine. Step on the rock, man. Get your name. Your name is on the roll or you wouldn't be. I know. Uh, so walk with God and follow God. Anybody in the house? Uh, I don't know what you're, hold on, let me pray. Anybody in the house? Uh, I don't know what you're going through but my God can make a way. My God can make a way. Do you hear me? All you got to do is humble yourself and surrender to God and say, God, here I am. I'm broken. I need healed, God. And God will do that. But you've got to die to self. You have got to die to self. If I could just, I, I, I don't want to point and... Uh, our relationship with each other is so good, but at Kenny, it comes from God. It comes from God. Given that we're bone of bone and flesh of flesh, and we walk together and we enjoy. On Sunday mornings, I'm in my office and, and I'm dressed and, and, and I'm waiting on, on, I can hear her in them high heels coming down the hall. And, and when she's coming down the hall, my heart starts to beat, I'm telling you. And she walks through the door and every Sunday, I said, man, you look good, babe. You look good. Hey, that's loving your wife. Do you hear me? That's cause if you don't love yourself, you can't love your wife. I'm getting ahead of my message. Uh, every woman in the house uh, ought to put your hands together and praise God. Uh, do you hear me? Come on, somebody. Oh. So if you're a Christian, don't let the world bring you back into the sleep, into the old man. Do you hear me? Ephesians, excuse me, I'm sorry. Ephesians 5 and 16, redeeming time because the days are evil. Our days are difficult. And so to make it through the days, no matter where we're at, we have to have high standards. I'm telling you, there is so much 
that will draw you back into the darkness. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, help me. One day, say, God, I got this addiction, I need help today. And then once he gets you through today, God, I got this addiction, help me today. In my marriage, in my finances, help me today. God, I'm telling you, you've got to have high standards. Ephesians 5 and 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So that word, be not drunk with wine, to be intoxicated with drink. And I'd never read this before, but I read this and it made me grieve. The word excess in the Greek means wasting away of the body. Wasting away of the body. There is many in this room that drink alcohol. Many in the body of Christ. And I'm not saying for a second sitting down and drinking a beer or drinking a glass of wine to send you to hell. But I don't want none of it. I've never counseled anyone in all my years, and I'm sure, Pastor, you would say the same thing, that looked at me and said, alcohol has been good for me. Never once. Did I have someone call and say, hey, I need counseling. I, I need help because I need to drink more booze because it's such a good thing. It destroys families. It kills people. And there's many in this room, excess, wasting away of the body. When I read that in the commentary, it made me cry in my office. It really did. Wasting away of the body. People are doing everything they can to live chemo, radiation, open heart surgery. And then you got the people on the other side. I would call fools, foolish. Wisdom you want to live, foolishness, wasting away of the body. Drunkenness often leads to other sins. 1 Corinthians 6 and chapter 10, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, shall enter into the kingdom of God. Huh. Ephesians 5 and 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns. I'm going back a second. Imitate God. Our children imitate us. So 20 years down the road when it's your child... It's an alcoholic or your child that driving with a DUI and hits somebody and happens every day and kills somebody that is innocent. And they seen you, you sowed that seed. Ephesians 5, 19. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. When you're attached, you don't only listen to it, it comes out of you. <laughs> That's what you call a relationship. <laughs> uh, Ephesians 5 and 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, submission. Remember I spoke about a word commitment, nobody likes commitment, well not too many people like submission. Submission is when you give up your own will for someone else's. See, we're bone of bone and flesh of flesh and there's things that she likes that I don't. And uh, not very many, honey, all right? Not very many. And uh, same way here. But it's not about me. And as the priest of the household, and that's what the Bible calls the man, and the spiritual leader, I need to put my, in every area, I need to put my wife above myself. Now, I didn't write this, God did. So if you don't like it, call God. Send him an email. He'll get it quicker than I get one, I promise you. Ephesians 5 and 22. Now listen, ladies, you gotta love me, but let me finish before you throw darts at me. Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives, 
Submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto the Lord. Don't forget, don't lose that. For the husband is the head of the wife. Okay, this is Bible. Even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. When dealing with wives and husbands, we must always remember that God's instructions are not grievous. Anything God instructs us to do is for your good. So when God instructs you like this, it's to make things easy and to make things light. So listen to Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is life. Light. If we walk down the path that God has laid for us, we experience the most loving and the most peaceful life that is possible. I didn't say without problems, there will be problems, but you will walk through those problems with the peace of God in your life. So if you'll follow what God tells us in our marriage, everything will work out. When God says man is the head, he's not talking about the man's ability. He's not talking about the man being worth more or of more value. He's not saying that the more man is smarter, more brilliant. God is talking about function. God is talking about an order within the organization. Every organization has a head. And a marriage between a man and a wife is an organization and two heads is a freak. I'm being serious. In every organization, there is a head. Do you hear me? Man and woman are in a partnership. But a partnership has to have a head. Has to. Ephesians chapter five, verse 26. Now listen, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word of God. Now listen to this. When Christ came to earth, Christ loved something that he had, you gotta hear this now, pay attention. When Christ came to earth, he had to keep working on something that he loved, but he couldn't leave it. He had to keep working on it. And even when he arose from the grave and ascended into heaven, he still hear the Holy Spirit and he's still working on us. When you love something, you can't leave it. You gotta keep working on it, do you hear me? You got to keep working on it. What a difference would exist in marriage if the husband would just nourish and cherish his wife as he does his own body. That's what the Bible teaches us. The husband should become one with his wife and the wife becomes one with her husband. It's one flesh, it's bone of bone, do you hear me? So Paul devotes twice as many words to telling the husband to love their wives as telling the wives to submit to their husband. How should a man love his wife? He should make her well-being of primary importance. I'm telling you, stand with me this morning. We're winding down, listen to me. Stay focused and don't run out the door unless it's an emergency, please. He should care for her as he cares for his own body. There is no question, no question. I would die for my wife, no question. Ladies, your husband is the head of the household, spiritually. That's, that's God's design, not to submit to his authority, not at all, not to be lesser, but if your husband loves you like Christ loves the church, the church is called the bride of Christ, right? And he loves us and he gave his life for us. Men, if you'll love your wives like that, ladies, there's not a woman in here that should fear submitting to a man that will love her the way Christ loved the church. If you believe that, give God a hand. Clap of praise. <laughs> Ephesians 5 and 29, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church, nourisheth means to feed, 
means to esteem. I'm going to close with saying this. The most intimate relationship I have on earth between my wife and I is what God uses to portray his relationship with his church. So when the world sees us as a couple, it should reflect God and God's plan for the church. We should walk in unity. I should care more for her than, than I care for myself. Does that make any sense? So God wants to use, <laughs> listen to this, God wants to use our house to preach to the communities. <laughs> when you're at the ball field or whatever, you know, God wants to use our house. Can, can I say this? What you are in your home is who you really are. I'm going to say it again to this side in case you didn't hear. What you are in your home, in your house, that's who you really are. So behind closed doors, you can scream and cuss and fuss with each other and you think nobody knows your kids are hearing it all. Huh? Some of you are divorced. Quit talking about your ex in front of your kids. It's still their mom, it's still their dad. What you do behind closed doors because God sees it all. <laughs> it amazes me how people try to hide stuff from me. It cracks me up. It really does. Ephesians 5 and 33, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence. Reverence, not nag, reverence her husband. Amen. I hope it helped you. I hope it helped you. I don't know the day that uh, she may take her last breath. I don't know the day that I may take my last breath. But we're going to live together. We're going to love each other. We're going to get along. We're going to enjoy every day in life. Don't wait till the funeral to say, honey, I wish we'd have made things right. Amen. Listen, every head bowed and every eye closed. When I came to Christ, man, I was just messed up and I felt like I had no hope and I had the weight of the world on me. And uh, I knew my way back home. I really did. I knew my way. And today, that's all you got to do, man. Just open up your heart and say, God, here I am, I'm broken and I need your help. God, I want to give my life to you today. I want to become a follower of God. I'm not going to single you out, but if you're here this morning and you would like to take that step and give your life to Jesus Christ, would you slip your hand up high and say today, slip your hand up high right where you're at and say, I want to give my life to Christ. Is there one in the house? I see your hand, thank you. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. You gotta raise your hand high. I see your hand, ma'am. Yes, somebody else. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Somebody else. Yes, sir, yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Yes, yes, somebody else. We don't wanna get in a hurry. I want you to know when you leave here, I want you to know that it is well with your soul. Somebody else? Anyone in the house? I see your hand, ma'am. Yes. If the, if the Lord's speaking to you, surrender to him. Surrender. Somebody else? Give your life to Christ today. Somebody else? Then as every head is bowed and every eye is open, you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your head and look at me. I want you to hear what I say. Jesus was not ashamed of you. In any form or fashion, he was not ashamed of you. He, he hung on a cross and he, and he died and he shed his blood and he gave his life. This is the most important 
part of the service is to give a salvation invitation. And you've make, you are making the best decision of your life. But it's the beginning, it's not the end. It's to become attached. And the goal is to be a follower of God. So pray this prayer out loud with me. And if you would, take somebody by the hand. You're just making a confession right there. Pray this simple prayer, but say it meaningfully. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. And I'm sorry, Lord. And today I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. Create a new heart in me. And Lord, from this day forward, I'll do the best that I can to serve you, to follow you, to become committed. My friend, if you just prayed that prayer and you meant it, and I welcome you to the family of God, but it's a beginning. It's not the end. It's a beginning. It's not the end. Thank you for listening to the Jewel City Podcast. You can join us in person Sundays at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. We have something for all people and all ages. Or join our live stream at 10 a.m. 